All right, guys, cut right so here. Figure out, I got some pictures of Orion the other day. Um, back on the fourth. Figure I'll try to process a few of them. I'm not going to do them all because it'd take forever to do these. Now, these pictures that I'm taking with this Canon Rebel T3, these are uh, JPEGs, but look at the size of them. 4,272 by 2,848 uh, RBG, RGBs. Is that crap coming up? Um, that's a huge picture. I mean, huge. So it takes quite a while. Looks like I might have already processed. Okay, so what I need to do is try to find one that the stars are as round as possible. See that one there? It's got a little bit of a... It, it wasn't a... My telescope wasn't tracking. That one's not bad. I'll use that one for the reference frame. Right click, use this reference frame. Now I'm going to stack this just with the light frames and then I will add the dark frames after we stack this, see what this looks like. So I click checked all. I want to hit the stack check pictures. I'm just using deep sky stacker. Usually I'll do two times or three times drizzle. That'll make the picture way bigger even, but way better uh, resolution. But for now, for the, just this thing that I'm doing now, um, I'm just going to do a real quick, hopefully a quick one. So everything looks okay, so we'll click okay. Now this will run. We're only doing a 21 picture, so it should take but a second. Let's kind of show you how I, I do this. And this, I don't know if I can move this while that's running. Nope. This should tell me how many seconds the pictures were. Uh, should tell me all the information about what the camera settings were when I shot this. So I had this uh, Canon T3, pretty old camera. I got it for 200 bucks at a pawn shop. And I just happened to have the right adapter to hook it to my 8-inch telescope. And then I have a, uh, I think it's a 0.6 focal reducer on the telescope so I can get a little more of the sky. Yeah, there's a couple of things I forgot to show you guys, but I'll just do it on the next video. Yeah, I am really was wanting to get the Gemini's uh, meteor shower, but the, the skies are screwed up tonight. But it would have been nice to have my... Uh, my uh, Canon Rebel camera getting a wide field, and then I have a Starshoot G3 color deep space camera that I could have really got some good shots of the comets and meteors. But I'm almost sticking a this Canon Rebel for the money. It's almost better than the deep space camera I got but time will tell on that the more I use them uh, I can live stream with my deep space camera I haven't figured out how to live stream with my Canon camera you know since buying it at a pawn shop I didn't get no software that come with it This thing should have about 11 seconds left, hopefully. So now it's, uh, so I don't know why, but it always comes out really white, and then I've got to adjust the RGB levels. We'll always start right here, and I'll just knock it back a little bit. Hit apply. Get a little more. I need to get the Adobe Paint Shop or something. 
I've got Adobe Lightroom, but I don't know how to use it yet. So this has got pretty good detail for only 21 pictures. And I don't know why that blue's kind of blue out in there. That's kind of weird. Now this is without the dark frames. Hopefully with the dark frames I get a lot of this. You can see with my telescope it's it's got like this circle here. And then it's nice and dark on the edges. I don't I thought that focal reducer would take care of some of that, but let's see if this will darken it up a little bit. Yeah, that darkens it up a little bit. Hopefully you guys can see this okay. I could shrink the recording screen capture box and maybe make that a full picture. Probably go here to the saturation. See if I can knock that down, get that funky blue. No, that made it more blue. What in the world? Maybe if I go up. Yeah, going up help. That's it's better to kind of have it more black and white, and then you can touch it up better with a paint program. Let me go up just a little more, see what that does. And that blue's coming back. Hmm. Whoa. Man, what in the world? I don't know why I did that. Sometimes this program freaks out a little bit. Still, that's some pretty cool detail of the Orion Nebula. First time shooting it with that camera, and that's, that's pretty crazy. Go down even a little more, see what happens. Yeah, I don't know why I'm getting that weird blue in there. I might be able to align the channels a little better or maybe even the dark frames might take that out me see what that does yeah this stuff is all trial and error just gotta keep keep messing with it and to find some decent settings it's like every picture is a little bit different it could have been the way I stacked it not doing the drizzle and stuff went for a test picture that's that star yeah see it's not real round at all that one's not bad just my telescope could need to be, uh, definitely probably needs to be, uh, collimated. Okay, I'm going to go back and add the dark frames. And then we'll restack it and see what happens. So I need to probably put this on RGBs or JPEGs. Oh, I guess I don't have them in JPEGs. Try raw files. Hmm. What do I do them in? Fits. Tiss. Oh, I guess I did them in Tiss. So I want to take about. Probably about 20 of these, so there's four, four, eight, twelve, sixteen, probably about right to there. Oh man, didn't hold shift down long enough. Try that. Now we'll try. Oh, okay, it's saying that the, it's not the same size. So usually this tells me the ISO and exposure. Well, I don't know why it's not. What is? That's weird. 
Oh, so I have JPEGs and TIFF files. That's why it's freaked out. Hmm. Okay. Well, that doesn't help anything. Yeah, two file, two formats won't work. So you can crank this contrast up and kind of get a preview of what your picture is going to look like. You know, if you can get out all this weird noise and stuff out of it. Well, I'm going to pause and see if I can get rid of all these dark frames.